Hi everyone, my name is Anne Ellis and I'm the Children, Youth and Family Minister at Mount Seymour United Church in North Vancouver. And I'd like to welcome you to our Children and Youth Gathering video for December 6, 2020. This Sunday marks the second Sunday in Advent, the season that leads up to Christmas. Advent is a time to help us prepare, uh, to prepare for the mystery that is Christmas. And each week, Advent has a special idea associated with it. Last week, the first day, the first week of Advent was hope. And this week's special idea is peace. For the activity that we're gonna do uh, at the end of this video or towards the end of this video, you're going to need um, some paper as per usual. Actually, you're gonna need two of the templates that came out in the email to your families. Um, if you came by this video, not through our children and youth uh, email, um, there are links to the templates in the description below. Um, one of them looks like this, and one of them looks like this. And you're gonna wanna print those both out and have them ready for later on in this video. Uh, you'll also want to have with you a pair of scissors and a glue stick. And you can pause that, this video right now and go and gather those supplies, uh, or you can wait until we get closer to the time. I'm also gonna remind you that in the email that we sent out, there is part two of our coloring for Advent pages. Um, you can see I've put up last week's right here and I colored it in and this is this week. So this will be in your email. Um, because of copyrights, I can't post a link to uh, these posters. So you, if you want to get these coloring posters, you do need to sign up for our uh, children and youth email, which is also in the description below. And you'll see that this week's picture, when I color it in, and when I don't, it will match up with this drawing here. So we're starting to make a bit of a poster. And over the next two weeks, there's gonna be two more pictures so that we'll get a really nice, beautiful picture all ready for Christmas. And I'll have this colored by next week, I promise. So grab and go, grab, grab, go, grab, grab and go those things right now and uh, come on back and we'll, we'll get ourselves started. <sighs> Let's take a couple of moments to breathe. <sighs> this time of year is so important to remember to breathe and I think it's the time of year where so many of us, especially adults and especially parents, forget to breathe. So parents, if you're watching, now is your chance. Breathe. And as we settle in and we breathe, we remember that here in this place, you are welcome. You are welcome at Mount Seymour, no matter how old or how young you may be, no matter your marital status, your sexual orientation, your gender identity, or your gender expression. You are welcome here, no matter your faith tradition, <laughs> whether you call yourself to be a Christian or if you are a part of another faith journey or if you're not a part of any tradition at all and you are simply curious and wondering. And we welcome all who seek the ideals of justice, peace, and compassion. You are welcome here. Mount Seymour United Church is located on the unceded and ancestral territory of the Salewatooth people. And they are part of the Coast Salish. And they have been stewards of this land from time 
immemorial. And I take this time now to recognize and voice the systematic oppression and the systematic racism that has existed and continues to exist in Canada uh, against our Indigenous uh, caretakers of the land. And I take right now to comment on and take notice of the privilege that I have received being a settler here. And I commit to working towards reconciliation uh, with the Indigenous caretakers and with all people who are marginalized and oppressed. Mount Seymour United Church is also located in the Seymour watershed. And I take time right now to honor the watershed because it is through water that we have life. Without the rivers and the streams and the rain and the snow, we would have no trees and we would have no birds or animals or plants and there'd certainly be no people. So we say thank you and we honor the water that gives us life. Over the four Sundays in Advent, we light the candles on our wreath to help us uh, count the time until Christmas. And we light the candles to remind us of the gifts that we are waiting to receive in this season. If you have a wreath at home, you might want to light some candles with me now. And if you don't have a wreath, that's totally fine. You can find some candles if you have some, or you can pretend you have some candles and light them with me. Last week, we lit the candle of hope and we said these words. We believe in hope, even when it is hard to find. May hope light the way for all who are seeking. This week we will light the candle of peace. And like hope, it's been a hard year for peace. I think a lot of people have had a hard time finding peace whether that's in their own lives or spirit or peace in the world. This world hasn't felt like the most peaceful place this year. Something that has helped me find peace is taking time to notice nature. When I go outside, I try to take a moment and breathe and look at the sun or look at the leaves changing color or look at the, the last of the flowers blooming or the yellow and orange and red leaves falling on the ground. And it's in those little things and taking just a moment or two to notice the beauty of the world around me that helps me feel at peace. So we light our second candle, the candle of peace. And we say these words. I, we believe in peace even when it is hard to find. May peace light the way for all who are seeking. Today, I am going to tell you a part of the Christmas story. Not quite all of it, excuse me, but some of it. The story about Jesus's birth uh, is, in, is told in two of the four gospels. 
the gospel or books of Luke and Matthew. And the two gospels tell different parts of the story and we combine them together at Christmas into one story. I'm going to start with the story in Luke. The book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 26 to 38. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in the Galilee, to a young woman who was to be married to a man named Joseph. The young woman was named Mary, and the angel said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. God is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at the words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am not married? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One will be born and called Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. In the Gospel of Matthew, we hear this part of the story. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But that's just when he had resolved to do this, an angel from God made an appearance to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will be the Savior for all people. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by, the, by God through the prophet. Look, the young woman shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but they had no marital relations with her until she had borne the son and he named him Jesus. So I wonder what it feels like to be asked by God to do something so big. And I wonder if you've ever felt that God has spoken to you. And I wonder if it is hard to 
say yes to God. Advent is a really good time to practice listening for God. For me, I like to light the candles on my Advent wreath in the evening when it's dark and the candles light up the room. I like to sit and listen for what God might like to say to me or think about what I would like to say to God. And sometimes I hear God that way. Sometimes though, messages from God come in other forms, like they did for Mary and Joseph. The angels came and shared good news. So I wonder if maybe God has brought us messages through other people or through things that we see or experience. And I wonder if you can think about somebody who has been a messenger like that. Somebody who's told you something or taught you something really meaningful and special. Or maybe they helped you when you really needed it. And those people seem like God's angels. So I wonder who might be an angel or a messenger from God for you. For our activity today, we are going to make some angels. And I already mentioned at the beginning of the video that you'll want to get some supplies. And I'll just go over that one more time. And then you can pause the video and go grab the supplies you need. You're going to want to get the two templates that came in the email to your family um, or go follow the links in the description to get the two different templates for the two different angels. So this template here is to bake this angel here, which is the angel in the story. And then this template is to make an angel that'll look like this, which will make a lovely decoration for a Christmas tree, or you could maybe give it to somebody. Um, it's a really, really pretty angel. You will also need to get some scissors, and you will need to get some glue sticks, or, well, a glue stick, you don't need to. So pause this video if you need to go grab those things, and then we're going to get started. Okay, so we're going to make the really easy angel first, and that's this one here. So all you need to do to make this angel is to cut out all along the black lines including these lines here you're going to cut like, just like snip them so they've got these these cuts in them like this and that's it so you gotta do because then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of bend these back and slide these two sections together and it gets a little wonky and a little finicky and so you kind of have to carefully bet, like hold them, curve, curve them maybe a little bit, maybe that's the right word, so that everything goes in the right direction. If you have trouble with that, you can ask one of your grown-ups. So then the back ends up looking like this and the front looks like this. And you've got this like angel that will like stand on a table or would go on the top of a tree. And the great thing about this one is if you want to then like 
decorate it, like color the, the wings or draw on it. You can just unfold it flat, color all you want on it, and then put it back the way that you like it. And if you were gonna make this as a gift and you were gonna like put it in the mail, it'd be super easy to mail because you could mail it flat and then just send along, see the bottom here has the how to fold instructions. So you could color it up or like write like a Christmas greeting on it, put it in the mail, be a great little present. It'd be great to like sit on your table or... So that's the angel from our story. That was pretty easy to make. Now this angel is a little trickier and you might want to pause the video as I go through the directions if I move too quickly. Um, and so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your, your template, this is it here, and cut out all of these, these strips so that you will have um, five strips yeah five one two three yeah five strips of paper on the template you'll see that that i've labeled them um this one long one is the top of the body that's going to be the head that's the bottom and those are two wings and this section you just cut out and you don't use and you can also take these strips and then you could you know, trace them again on this piece of paper and, and then you could make another one. I wanted to make this as, um, the, use the least amount of paper as possible. And then you could make multiples with one piece of paper. So you're gonna wanna cut all those strips out. And I've got some cut out already here. And I, I wrote on these ones to help me remember which shape is, is for which part, because suddenly they cut them out and they look weird. Um, if you're gonna color this or decorate this, do it before you glue it together, because once you've got this, it might be a little tricky to color. Uh, so you might wanna decorate it beforehand. So here's what we're gonna do. This is the piece that is the head. So we're going to take some glue and we're going to put a little bit of glue on one end and we're just going to curve the strip of paper around. Ta-da! Super easy. Put that there. Um, then I'm going to take the piece that's the bottom of the body, it's the shortest piece, and I'm going to take the piece that is called the top of the body, which is the longest piece, and those are what I'm going to use next. And on the bottom of the body slip paper, I'm going to put glue on the two ends, right there, and right there. And then I'm going to take the long top of the body and I'm going to glue the end together. And then I'm going to bend together and just give it a pinch until the glue is like nice and solid. And then I've got this really cool um, bell shape, which is going to be the body of the angel. And then the wings, I'm going to put a bit of glue on one end. And when we did the head, we folded it and made a curve to make a circle. But this time I'm just going to pinch the two ends together and I'm going to get a water drop kind of shape like that. And I do that with both wings. Okay. 
like so. And now I've got two wings and I have a body and I have a head and I need to attach them all together. So I'll take the body and I'll put a little bit of glue where I'm going to put the head at the top. Glue it down and I glued the the part of the head strip that I, I glued where, where the two pieces meet, I glued that down just to kind of hide that seam a little bit, but whatever. Ta -da. And then I'm going to take one of the wings and you kind of have to guess it where you want your the shoulders, right? Like it's kind of here and, and there. And I'm going to put glue on either side. And then press it Just like that. And there we go. I've got an angel. And then you, you know, find some string and, and tie a string around here and hold it up. And then you could hang it on your tree. And they actually, it will stand as well, which is kind of cool. And so that is how you can make an angel out of paper strips. And I think these are really beautiful. I'm going to put it out of here. And then my other one, I don't think I'll put that one over here. I've got one angels. So last week we started learning uh, this little light of mine in sign language with our very special guest, Heather Wilkes and Carla Wilkes was filming and singing. And they're gonna come back again to help us learn two more verses this week. And they are going to then also do the sign language for all four verses together. And we're learning this little light of mine for a few different reasons. I think first off, because sometimes this world feels kind of dark. It is getting darker earlier this year, this time of year, and and I think when we feel sad, things can feel kind of dark. And it's okay to feel sad right now. It's okay to be sad that Christmas isn't going to look the way that we're used to. That's okay. Um, something that helps me to feel better, though, is to try and think of good things. And that's one of the reasons we're learning this little light of mine, so that we can practice remembering that even in the dark, there is light. And one of the other reasons is because this song is 100 years old this year. The song has been sung by people for the last 100 years, and I think that's pretty cool. And we're learning it in sign language so that we can safely sing it without spreading our germs everywhere. So as I said, we're going to turn this over in a minute to our special guest, Heather Wilkes, who is going to teach us the next couple of verses of the song. And we would like to invite you to practice uh, the sign language uh, for this song and then make a recording of yourself singing the song in sign language and send it along to us. Or if you play an instrument and you would like to make a recording of yourself playing this song on your instrument, 
and then send it along to us, that would also be super fantastic. Um, and then we're going to see if we can put all the recordings together and make a video of all of us sharing the song in sign language and with music, um, which I think would be really fun. So if you think that you might want to do that, uh, send me an email. That's also in the description below. Let me know that you're thinking of doing that and you'd like to practice and you'd like some more information about how we're going to make that happen, which I'm still trying to figure out. Um, oh, and one more thing before I pass on to Heather and her sign language is I want to remind you of our Christmas card contest. This also would have come in the email to your families. Um, usually each year, the children and youth at Mount Seymour United Church will make Christmas cards for uh, the youth safe house and the youth safe house is exactly what it sounds like it's a it's a place for young people uh, to go and stay if their own homes are not safe for them or they do not feel safe in their homes and sometimes they're there over Christmas and that's really hard so we make Christmas cards uh, we're not gathering in person this year so we can't make cards like we usually do and so instead what we're inviting you to do is design a Christmas card take a photograph of it scan it whatever send it to me email in the description below and we will pick some winners to make our cards with this year um, and those winners will get a prize of some sort of amazing something or other um, and then we will be have cards that we can send out I need your car designs by December 15th. So start drawing, send me a picture, and this is for all ages. If you can hold a crayon, you can design a card, and I want to see it. So email me your card design, and we will award some prizes in one of our next videos. Um, and yeah, now. <sighs> over to Heather and the sign language for this little light of mine. Amen. Hi, I'm Heather and we're going to learn the next two verses of this little light of mine in sign language. So first we're doing, won't let anyone blow it out, I'm going to let it shine. So to say won't, won't, we go like won't, like we won't, and then let, and then anyone is like, you make like a fist kind of, and you go like that, and then one, any one. So it's won't let any one, and then blow, blow it out like you're blowing, and this is the air. And then I'm going to let it shine. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. So the last verse is let it shine around the world. I'm going to let it shine. So we go let it shine. And then around, like it's going around a circle, around, and then the world is you take your fingers like two W's, put them like this, and then go around like it's a, a world, because the world is round. <laughs> you say, I'm gonna let it shine. So, let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let's sign together now. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. 
Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let anyone blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now we're going to sing the whole song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Don't let anyone it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let anyone blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Don't let anyone blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine around the world. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.